Hey, what's up? It's Dan. Time for another update. It's been a uh, really busy, productive weekend this weekend. Had a lot of extra time. Uh, my buddy Brad Kumler was over the whole weekend with me. We got a ton done on this thing. And uh, very, very, very happy about it. So, um, let's see. I'm going to do a, hopefully a wiring, a separate wiring video. We already shot um, a video clip showing with the upper intake off and how the Ron Francis harness is like laid out and all that basic stuff. And then we kind of covered some, uh, some of the details. So I'm hoping we will touch back on that and kind of cover more of the wiring as far as what was connected. There was what? Five main wires from the Ron Francis harness. Three, three to five wires from the Ron Francis harness that physically get connected to the wire harness on the truck. Or is it three? I don't know. Anyway. Obviously, fuel pump relate, related, inertia switch, um, neutral safety switch stuff, key on power, constant power, stuff like that. So it's probably at least five connections. Again, I'm not the wiring guy, and I take no credit for any of the wiring on this truck. It's 100% Brad Kumler helping me, and then we are, we are also getting a ton of uh, help and assistance from Brian Racy. He's done... I don't know, a handful or more of uh, 5 swaps in various vehicles. So uh, let me show you what we've been, been doing. All right, so the truck is on its own weight. The coil springs are on the coilovers. The 40s are on. And it is off the hoist. Finally. <laughs> That was the goal this weekend. So what have we been getting done? What can I start with? Uh, well, I can start with the with uh, stuff we can see now. So before I put the coil springs on the coilovers, we had the truck in the air with everything drooped out 100%. Then we put one tire on the side. We were going to lift with the engine hoist to simulate full bump on one side and full droop on the other to let us start trimming for the trimming the fenders. This is probably trimmed 95%, 98% um, as of now. I will do all the finishing stuff down the road a little bit, but I wanted to get everything kind of lined up. So this is, uh, let's see, it's probably been, what, three, four videos ago. I went over how I totally rechanged the three-link setup, and I actually moved the axle one inch more forward. Well, now you can really tell the approach angle. Well, I mean, pic picture the bumper being on here. The approach angle is, is awesome. Really happy with that. Um, the coilover's got a slight lean back to it, which is also kind of a benefit. It's all working out really well. Uh, let's see. I tied up the drag link today. I finally got that done. I got my track bar set up where it's happy. Um, this is not right height. This is probably two and a half, three inches higher than ride height. Um, but everything throughout the whole cycle, the drag link and the track bar look amazing. Their angles are almost identical, almost perfect. So I'm really happy with that. <clears throat> so that's done. Um, I've been tightening and torquing all the bolts. We put the hood on. It's not 
test fit because it's going to come back off anyway. I mean, not test fit, but as far as alignment. It'll be back off for paint, but I did put my, from James Duff, their hood strut kit. That was on the Bronco 2. Obviously, I kept that. So that's installed. Now the hood's up. So that's cool. Um, I think I'll... I'll probably insert the clip, although I did post it on YouTube anyway, of the engine starting. Everything with the motor wiring is 100%. Motor is starting up, you know, right away. Boom! It's up. So that's awesome. Um, brakes have been vacuum bled. So those are all vacuum bled. Um... Obviously, all the fluids are in. The power steering slash hydro boot, or not hydro boost, but well, yeah, it's all part of the same thing. The whole power steering system is mostly bled. I need a little bit more engine runtime to 100% do that. So it's probably like 85% bled. Coolant's in the in the motor. That's been pretty much burped out. Still needs to be double checked. Um, this right here is a VO switch. It's similar to what a lot of the Jeep guys run. Um, I think, those, yeah, those are called S pods, they call them. Basically, this is an all in one. Um, this will control eight different um, accessories, devices, whatever you want. Um, Bleepin' Jeep actually has an episode on, on his channel uh, doing a very in-depth install and how that works. So basically you run this thing wherever you want it. You give it, you know, ground, 12-volt power, key on power. And then it has its own one single wire that goes into the cab of the vehicle. And has a... Let's see... Little eight, was it eight? Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, not digital, but I guess you can call it eight, eight digital switch um, panel. It's like, uh, I don't know, two and a half tall by four and a half, five inches wide and like less than a half inch thick. Has a little round ball ram mount, so it's very universal. So basically, all eight devices underneath the hood that are wired to that. Uh, box one small wire which is this right here is all you have to run inside of the cab to that switch box and you can control eight things so that thing's awesome s pods are a lot more money this is probably i don't know probably a china knockoff but the video and review that uh, bleep and jeep did on on it was really good and he showed all the features of it you can change the backlit color red blue green white i believe and then each individual button you can uh let's see how do you explain it like right now it's like on off or you can do like one click and it can make like i don't know your light pods or light bar a flash or you can program it to make it to a strobe. So there's a few functions you can program each individual switch to do, which is pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to setting all that stuff up. Uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, I know I already covered the whole transmission coolers, the power steering cooler with the hydro boost and all that stuff, that's all been covered. Um, so yeah, the 40s are on, the coilovers are on, the springs. I have not charged them yet with nitrogen. Uh, let's see, what do we do in the back of the truck? Back of the truck, you can see how the rear reservoirs come inside from the TMR shock towers. And then I have a two by two inch square tube um, no, I'm sorry, that's not two inch. 
that's inch and a half square, three sixteenth wall tube to uh, give the tower some rigidity. And then I have some future plans on what else is going to be added to that. I don't have a design laid out in front of me yet, but what I do know is that my spare tire, matching rim, 40-inch tire, will lay in between my towers on the floor. I plan on not carrying the spare all the time. If I'm just at a, uh, you know, a local ORV park, I'll just keep the spare on the trailer. But when we are somewhere else that's, you know, 45 minutes plus away from the trailers, I want to have a way to have a spare. And I do not want a spare on the back bumper on this truck. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to have, you know, my recovery gear, spare parts, whatever, cooler. I'm going to have my power tank in here. So down the road, I'm basically going to build off of this tube probably a lay or a, you know a three bars that come out and then feet to go down to the to the floor and then I will have a tie down for a spare tire for the spare tire to mount on top of this like I guess I'll call it a rack for now Basically, it'll sit flat on top of this rack, and it's, you know, 13 and a half inches tall. I'll still be able to see around it. No big deal. Plenty of space for it, because I have some other stuff that uh, will help me see out the back of the truck. Uh, this is obviously not done done, but my Yukon air compressor for the lockers is mounted back here. This had a factory subwoofer enclosure with uh, and two amps, actually. So there's plenty of room behind this plastic panel. <clears throat> so that's where I decided to mount the air locker, just because it's got a lot kind of going on with it. The two air lines coming out. Although this, this hose is a lot more flexible than I thought it was going to be. So that's what's going on here. And then with the Yukon, and I guess it's the same with like the ARBs, when you run, the, their compressors come with a harness, and the harness is designed to have a switch to turn the compressor on, and then two switches, one for, you know, front locker, one for rear locker. But it seems like with the way their switch is designed, Basically, the rear locker has to already be engaged before you can switch the front locker on. Which to me is kind of, I don't know, weird. You should be able to control all that stuff 100% individually. So that's how Brad and I wired it. Brad took the harness and figured out a way to rewire it so that the stock Yukon harness is actually being ran from the compressor all the way to the front to the key on and uh, constant 12 volt source. And then each of the locker uh, manifolds and the compressor itself are wired into my VO switch. So buttons one on that switch is compressor on, button two is rear locker, button three is front locker. And that's all controlled right on that little switch, already wired. <clears throat> so that's sweet. Uh, let's see. So the radio I guess I'll show you. <laughs> Can't sell the bag. It's by a company, uh a Toto. It's a single den with a fixed floating eight inch touchscreen and it's an Android based system. Uh, it's got multiple holes to raise and lower the screen, and you can tilt the screen. So that's going to go in my radio spot, obviously, and I'm going to adjust it so it's just above the HVAC controls, 
So it's not going to really hopefully block my uh, right vent. And uh, so that's going to offer, like I said, it's an Android-based system. It's an AM, FM radio, Android-based unit slash open source. I don't know, whatever. But it already has Google Maps. It already has Google Play, the Play Store. Um, it's got its own Wi-Fi antenna, Bluetooth, its own GPS antenna. So from what I've heard and what I've read, this thing should be able to basically act like any cell phone. Load in whatever apps you want, Google Maps. I'm hoping to be able to load into uh, load uh, the trail map stuff into it. I haven't got that far into it yet, obviously. But if I can at least mirror my phone to that, would be cool. <coughs> Also, the reason why I'm doing this is it's going to have a backup camera. And I'm also going to have a forward or front camera. So obviously, anytime I'm reverse, it'll automatically look at a reverse camera or I can turn it on whatever I want. And then the front camera, you know, when you're on the trail or doing an obstacle, you don't always have the luxury of, of having a spotter all the time. So at least this way I'll be able to see what's going on over like a drop off or over a cliff or whatever might be in front of me that I'd, I'd like to see. So I'm going to have a front rear camera, touch screen, radio. Um, while wiring it, we thought we were going to bypass the factory amp in the Explorer because this has the uh, factory JBL uh, system in it. Which again, it's right here. So it was this huge plastic thing. It's already outside, but basically we had to keep this factory amp plugged in because the signal from the radio stock comes all the way back to this amp first before it goes back to the speakers. So this has to be in line or at least wired in somehow. So we tested it. We put the stock speakers back in for a second. Those are obviously trash. They're blown. So I'm going to run this amp for now. I have four kicker speakers coming, six by eights. So I'm going to see how this amp sounds with the kickers. If it sounds good, that's good enough for me. It doesn't need to be a uh, <laughs> sound system, uh, you know, a crazy sound system in it. Uh, let's see, what else did we do? Like I said, all the all the fluids are full. I got all the diff fluids in. Air lockers have been tested. Everything functions. Everything works perfect. I'm still waiting on... Well, <laughs> that's a whole other story. A couple videos ago, I was explaining that my quad gauge was ordered with the temp gauge in Celsius. So long story short, I sent it back to Speed Hut. They swapped it out for me, sent it back. It wasn't shipped where I want it to be shipped. And the dog actually tore the box up and destroyed the gauge. So it was actually Speed Hut's uh, mistake. They had uh, no questions. They fixed it for me. So that should be hopefully back here by this Friday. Other than that... That's the gauge cluster, how it's kind of looking without the gauge bezel on, the whole dash. But like I said, everything's been tested. I'm not going to connect the battery in this video and show everything. But And then I got my trans gauge, which also matches the top gauges. And then my air fuel gauge from AEM. I was very lucky... AEM sends you out a black face, a white face, a black bezel, and a chrome bezel. When I first had it installed in the Bronco, it was the chrome bezel with the black face. So Brad's like, uh, by chance, do you still have the white face and the black bezel? And I'm like, I have no idea. It's been a minute. <clears throat> Luckily, I found it. So now all of my gauges match. It's awesome. Uh, let's see. So what else? 
I know the video doesn't really seem like a lot's been done, but I'm telling you, the amount of wiring and the amount of this, the amount of that, it's 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 in, it's insane. So what's coming up next? So the big goal was to get this truck on its own weight, and we achieved that goal. So now. <clears throat> This is going to be moved back in this open area that I finally got cleaned up. And then Brad's Bronco 2 is coming in here this weekend. He's going to do a very similar front shock tower coilover setup. He's going to run 12-inch uh, front coilovers and 14 in the rear. He's going to have a very similar track bar bracket set up on his. And the rear, and he's going to maintain his, he has the Duff, James Duff, long arm, radius arm kit. So he's going to maintain the radius arms, but then swap to coils and shock towers and an upgraded uh, track bar system and steering system. In the rear of his, he's going to do a very similar four length setup with 14 inch in the back. So we will, or I will post some videos of that too. I'm not going to try to take all the credit or cover everything of his, but whatever's going on here in the barn, I will definitely cover it and share. Um, so in the meanwhile, <clears throat> now that my truck starts up, all the electrical is pretty much good. Hopefully the dash will be finished up this by this Friday. And then my front drive shaft should hopefully be here this week. That's kind of turned into a uh, <laughs> way longer than what was supposed to happen. So, let's see the front drive shaft. And I know I mentioned in a few other videos that I right now do not have an actual transmission cross member. But I mocked this up. It's hard to tell in the video, but this is inch and a half OD quarter wall tubing. And I made four flanges. Basically, the ends will be welded to the inside of... Probably going to sound weird. It's going to be one of those things where you have to like see it when it's done. So basically, the back side of the lower frame link mounts this will be welded in between them and then obviously this it's designed so that the center will unbolt and slide out for transmission removal and whatever else so once this is welded in place i will then uh, fabricate to the actual transmission mount but that'll come up here in the future Basically with the motor mounts, the motor mounts are polyurethane and the TMR uh, Atlas transfer case mount that's on a super heavy duty cross member is good enough to start it and at least pull it up slowly onto a trailer to at least get the exhaust done. Once the exhaust is done, then the O2 sensors will be in the system and my air fuel wideband uh, sensor will be in the, in the exhaust as well. At that point, then I can actually let it start up and run and idle out. Then we'll check timing and make sure everything's 100% burped and everything else, bled. So once the exhaust is done, well actually I guess I skipped a stop, I skipped, skipped a step. The very next thing that needs to happen in this truck, I need to put the driver's seat in to mock up the shifter console. And I haven't probably talked about this in a while. But that's a uh, shifter console from Goat Built. Comes in two halves and then the bottom of the cup holders you weld it all together. This will have my art car shifter 
And the plan is to uh, that's tight. It'll be mounted on the tunnel, obviously. So I have to have the seat in here to see where I want it. And I just have to work around the rear heat duct and then this bump out in the floor pan. So Brad already kind of designed his on his truck. So we just got to come up with the design on this truck here. So once the shifter is mounted with the console, then I can actually get the shifter in here and then get the cable hooked up to the transmission. Then it'll be ready to roll and start up to go to the exhaust shop. So speaking of exhaust, real quick, I already have the uh, advanced adapter headers on the truck. And I already welded on, and it's kind of hard to see. So the dried works as is. Oh, you probably can't see, but I put a V-band flange on that header just as it is. But on the driver's side header, when using V-bands, that is, let's see if I get the flash on. Can't really, I can't turn on. Anyway, the header is like right here. Well, with a V-band clamp, it wants to hit the frame. So basically, I extended the header by like eight inches. And then down at the bottom of the extension is the other V-band flange. It's exactly how I did it on, on SARS, the Bronco 2, and it worked great. So it should be very similar that upper third link that's pre-bent from uh, Rough Stuff should give me plenty of clearance. And I took, I don't know, about a dozen pictures earlier, fully bumped and drooped out for the exhaust guy so he has an idea how that upper link works and how much clearance he has. So real quick, um, I'm going to run a uh, Dynamax turbo muffler. I'm hoping that's going to be fairly mellow. I ran Flowmasters in the past, but the uh, the loudness kind of gets old, especially when you're on the trails. I mean, you know, you're driving around and you're creeping around. It's like you don't need something that loud. <coughs> and then now that this truck's going to have the wife and kids in it. I don't want everyone just listening the whole time. It sounds cool, yes, once in a while, but I want this truck to be just very mild and mellow and not just not not too loud. So, all right, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Like I said, the majority of it up and running and the electrical is done. Once I get the gauge, the gauge and radio and all that dash will be put back together. That'll be done. Headliner will come out next. We'll get that redone. Once the shifter is mounted, we'll be done with that. And then I have all my paint. I know I mentioned it before, but I'm going to keep the same theme I had. It's going to be tan and black. You know, tan paint with all black bumpers, tires, wheels. Uh, I got a different paint this time. I'm hoping it's going to be a tad more beige. Sarge's paint, well, Sarge's paint was also flat paint, so it had no shine. And it had almost a slight more yellow tint to the tan. So I went with... Uh, it's called Shoreline Beige. I'm hoping it's going to end up being a little bit more beige than what Sarge was. And it's going to be um, gloss. So I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to look awesome when it's all done. All right, that's it. The video's obviously longer than I thought it was going to be. Those are all the updates. Like I said, it doesn't look like it, but a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton has been done.
And for this thing to finally be on its own weight, it's so exciting. So yeah, big shout out to uh, Brad Kumler and Brian Racy for all the extra tips, tricks, and helps. <laughs> all right, I'll catch you guys on. Sweet. I started to feel a little bit of resistance.